In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the security breach controller. Uh, in order to do that, the first thing that you would have to verify is whether the security breach add-on was also imported into your system. So if we go into the workbench overview and we open the uh, import lock of the workbench transport, uh, we could here see that the package was correctly imported into the system. Now, in order to start the configuration cockpit, we would have to activate the services that relate to the WebDimper application. And for that, we go into transaction SICF. Now, on, within SICF, we set a filter on the service name. And this would be a lot quicker because it's a quite extensive library that SCP does ship. When I execute, we would see there is a component that deals with WebDim Pro. Now, the configuration cockpit itself is also a WebDim Pro application. And uh, when we right click here and we say activate the service, we would here confirm to activate all the configuration uh, applications that we do ship standard. Now, while this activation runs, uh, it's important to note that you would only have to do the configuration on one particular box. That's the system that you would nominate as the controller. And the controller will be used for day-to-day -day configurations and for also steering and controlling all the monitoring services. Now, this was activated. Now, then you go in and select the central application configuration cockpit. You right click and you would use the, the option test service. Now the test service would allow you to open your web browser and do no, let me refresh this uh, transaction. You would have to authenticate to your uh, ACP backend. Once you authenticate it, the security breach application will instantly you know open up. Now in order to configure my very first system, my controlling system. I open the four tap here, the connection tab. When we go in, you won't see any system being listed here. At first, what we do is we toggle the uh, editing mode. We go into uh, creation mode and we here select create my controller. The controller is gonna be, you can only have one controller per landscape. And that is a system from where all the configuration is then centrally maintained. When I click controller, I would have to nominate the system ID. Now, the system that we're currently installing on is the S4D box. It's a HANA box. Um, the destination, now the destination, this is the RFC destination that is going to be used by the intrusion detection system in order to continuously monitor the system. Now, and even though we do run locally, now we do recommend to always work with an RFC destination, uh, which is also ideal for load balancing purposes, uh, because you do want to have your IDS always on 24 seven. Now I've already uh, created a destination up front, which is called uh, SB at S4D. Now I have to watch out with the capitals because it is case sensitive. Um, now once I've entered the RFC destination, I'm not yet going to activate it. Uh, we're not going to maintain any of the more advanced features. Uh, we can, you can read about those in our knowledge base on how to use them. Uh, but very important is you would have to nominate an IDS user, uh, which is a system user that is going to be used in order to read all your underlying data sources. Uh, this is a user that's going to read the security audit lock, your system lock, your gateway locks, etc. All the different. Uh, sources. Now I've already created that user up front. Uh, the user is called SegBridge in this environment and I've given that user also the monitoring rights and uh, the monitoring rules that are shipped by standard with this product they have just been assigned to that user ID. Now I uh, key in the password which we are going to put into the security breach vault as well and once done I hit the save button. Now I've maintained the, the very first system settings and so we now know that the S4D system is going to be the controller. Now the first thing that you would do is you would perform the system check. Now once I click on that button it is going to perform all the prerequisite checks and we can here see that all of the checks are successful and we can see that the security audit lock on this particular box is already fully configured. 
and we could see that here you know at the moment the uh, security audit locks has a hundred percent free capacity now once all these checkboxes are great you're actually good to go now we go back to the previous screen and um, a bit lower down you could also see which clients are to be monitored now just because of the test purpose uh, I've only selected client 100, uh, but we would typically recommend you to always monitor every single client uh, that is available on your system. Uh, once this is all done, I click on the button Activate, click on the button Save, and you've done your main configuration. Eh? You've already defined which system in your landscape is the controller. Now, the next thing that you would then do is you would assign a hardening standard, a catalog of checks to your particular systems. Now also for this, a security breach comes equipped with a, with a default setting, with a template. Now, in order to display the templates, there's a button for that. You could see Abex Golden Catalog is shipped. Now, when I would uh, select my template, you would instantly see all of the different listeners or sensors uh, that come with our standard settings. Now, the Apex template is based upon the SAP security baseline in combination with the DSRG security standards, also combined with the expertise that we have gained over the last few years uh, at the great majority of our customers. So it is actually ready to be used instantly. Now, we're going to assign this very specific template as the baseline for the system S4D. Now, in order to do that, there's a button, say, Copy Configuration. I select my system S4D. I press the Copy button. And since it's the first time, you know, we assign configuration, so there is an automatic check that will prevent you from overwriting previous configs. Uh, everything's green and we're good to go. Now, we've assigned a security baseline to our controller environment and from now onwards we're actually good to go and we can actually already start the intrusion detection scanner now in order to start the scanner and it, technically it is implemented as a uh, background job which is always on so once you've selected the s4d system you click here on start the intrusion detection scanner once you've clicked the button, uh, apparently there is an issue with the communication framework, which we can investigate in just a second. Uh, most likely because I did not maintain any frequency parameters. Now, let me go back to the connection tab, the system S4D, and indeed, I did not maintain any parameterization. So let me go back into change mode, and we are going to configure the IDS frequency to to run every three minutes. Now, this very much depends upon the type of system that you run. Uh, if you have a very large production box, uh, we do recommend typically to run every three minutes. Now, the engine itself is self-load balancing. Uh, it will at maximum consume three parallel slots on your machine, not more, uh, unless you, of course, specify to use more. But with three parallel jobs that run every three minutes, we could say that you run nearly real time. At maximum, you would have a time delay of three minutes. Typically, it would be a lot faster. Now, let me again save this. Go into safe mode. I go back into my agent configuration. Oh, no, I would have to go into the job controller. And let me again press the start intrusion scanner. And now you would see that the IDS engine is automatically waking up and the scanner would become active. Now, once the scanner is active, it also means that all the data traffic, all the user activities which are happening on this very specific box are continuously being monitored. And as soon as this activation process is done, and it would already be done, let's have a look at the overview. Oh, it's not yet there. Let me again refresh and we see, you know, the very first IDS jobs have already been scheduled. It's currently running. Now, we would instantly see whether things are active by going into the event monitor. Now, once you've activated the scanner, uh, let me press the refresh button here as well. Uh, and indeed, here we already see, you know, the very first number of events arriving in the cockpit. So within the short introduction, we've done the base installation of installing a controller, 
assigning a hardening standard to your controller and also activating the intrusion detection uh, system for this particular system. Thank you.